Hello, my lovely students. We are starting a circles unit. So the good thing is today's notes, um, I will put the filled out ones on the website, but we're just gonna do a brief overview of what these little parts are. So in the first diagram, what you can see is you have a circle and a bunch of different lines and segments drawn. So the difference between those um, will kind of help you understand the different angles and things that are formed that we're gonna talk about in this unit. So the first thing, a chord. You can see the example that's drawn here and labeled is chord AB. So all a chord is, is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So the endpoints themselves are on the edge of the circle. So AB is a perfect example of that. Secant, a secant line, first of all, is typically a line or a ray, something that extends outside of the circle. But it's different than a chord because the chord ends on the circle, the secant extends beyond it. So I'm gonna write it as a line that intersects the circle in two places or two points. So the way that it's labeled on the paper here is that it's line L. That would be your secant line in the picture. All right, the next one, a tangent. We say that a line is tangent to a circle if it touches it in just one point. So I'm gonna write that as the line that intersects the circle at exactly one point. So in the picture, that would be line M here. And then the last part, the point of tangency, well, that's that one point that we're talking about right here. So it's literally referred to as the point of tangency. Keep in mind, if at any point the video moves too quick, just pause it and then pick back up when you're ready. So under the practice ones, here, there's multiple answers that you could pick out that are correct, but it also includes two extra things. We talked about this in the last unit when we talked about surface area and volume. So you know diameter is that distance all the way across the circle. Radius is the distance just from the center point to the edge of the circle. So when it says identify a line or a segment that would intersect circle L here, you know, for the diameter, there really is only one diameter drawn. Right? And that's the diameter running from K all the way through L to point M. So you can say diameter K M. As for radii, there's three of them. Because any segment that goes from the center point out to the edge is a radii. So there's L K, L J, or L M. So you can just list one of them and that would be fine. As for chords, secants, tangents, chord, specifically just has to go from one edge to the other. So technically every diameter is a chord, but if I just go from one edge point to another, like J to M, that would be a good example of a chord there. A secant has to extend beyond that. So here's the thing. I can actually use J, M again, but I'm gonna show slightly different notation. Instead of putting a segment bar over the top, I'm gonna draw a line over the top. So just understanding that this is just the segment, this is the line that goes on forever. And then the last part, the tangent line, that's this line that runs along the side here. So it's hitting at point H, so point H would be the point of tangency, but the name of the line, we'd use that little lowercase m right there. All right, as for down at the bottom, we can talk about this part pretty quickly. Um, when it says congruent circles, we know congruent essentially means the same thing as equal. So we can think of them as being the same size or essentially that they have equal radii, which is the plural for radius. Concentric circles, I always think of a dartboard or like if you're throwing rocks and you see a ripple in the water, concentric circles have the same center point 
and just different size radii. And then the last one, tangent circles. Since tangent means that they intersect at just one point, they would just share a point on the edge of the circle. So you could have it, when it says internally tangent, it literally means one circle's inside the other. Externally tangent means that they're next to each other and they just share that point. So I'm just gonna say that the circles touch at one point. So this is some of the basic stuff to be able to get down for this unit. When we flip over to the next page, they give you some examples of what it looks like for circles that have common tangent lines. So I'm going to change my paper here. So it's just showing that they can have, you know, tangents where if one circle is bigger than the other, maybe they're kind of angled at each other. You can have them where they crisscross in the middle. Right? So when it says draw in all the common tangents for this one, do the best you can. If you have a ruler, this is a great time to use it. Otherwise, you can draw it in sort of like this top one where you can show a tangent line that runs along the top of each. You can show a tangent line that runs along the bottom of each. But then because these circles touch at that one point, we also have that tangent line that runs right down the middle between them. So there's three tangent lines here. All right, there are a few other concepts we want to talk about with this first intro day. One of them being a little hefty on the vocab. If I slide up here, it says if a line is tangent to the circle, then it's going to be perpendicular. We know that term. Perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. All right, so look in the diagram. This part here, that's the tangent line. The radius, that's the part coming from the center of the circle out to the edge. And what they're saying is if they meet at that point of tangency, they are perpendicular, which we know perpendicular means that they're forming right angles. So that's gonna form a right angle right there. Mm -hmm. So the next problem here, I just wanna set it up. When it says, if the length from E to D is 1,000, so that teeny tiny little length, um, find the length from E to H, what theorem can we use? What I really want you to look at is the bigger picture. You have a radius, you have a tangent here forming a right angle. And anytime I'm talking about side lengths with a right triangle, what I want you to think is that we can call this A, call that B, call the hypotenuse C, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So even though this unit is about circles, those triangles still come through. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. To be able to finish this problem and set it up, we have to be a little crafty here. The fact that C to H is the length of the radius, and all radii in a circle are equal, that means the length from C to D is the same length or is 4,000. So what that actually means for us is that the whole length from E all the way to C is 4,000 plus 1,000 or 5,000. So if we wanted to use Pythagorean theorem for this particular one, you'd have to recognize that that 5,000 that's the hypotenuse. The 4,000 here, let's say, would be A, and we'd be looking for the B length of it. So if we plugged in, it would look like 4,000 squared plus something squared would be equal to 5,000 squared, and then we could play the game from there. I would rather move on to the next question. You can check the filled in notes if you'd like to see the rest of that one. Mm -hmm. So on to the next page. Here's another example using that same concept. So it says we've got ray, oh, excuse me, a little off the page there. We have ray AB, 
Um, tangent to circle C. So there's a keyword right there. It's tangent right here. And then AC equals five, right? The radius drawn to point C is 12. So that implies here's your center point right here. And the radius from here to here is 12. Find the length of the segment from the center point to point A. So let's actually draw that in. So from the center point to point A would be that length right here. I'm going to call that X because that's what we're trying to find. So what I want you to take note of is you've got a tangent line and you have a radius. So the radius is perpendicular to the tangent, which means it's the same setup as the last one. We can use a little Pythagorean theorem. This time, the two legs are the 5 and the 12. And what we're looking for is the hypotenuse or the C part of it. So when we plug in to A squared plus B squared equals C squared, this would be 5 squared plus 12 squared equals X squared. When we put it all together, we take the square root, it will come out to be 13. And you might even recognize that as a Pythagorean triple from earlier in the year. All right, last new concept for today. And that is the idea that if you have two tangents drawn from the same exterior or external point, so outside of the circle, what they're saying is the segments are going to be congruent. Right? So if I go from this external point and I draw a segment to one side of the circle, go back to that same point, draw it to the opposite side, those two lengths are going to come out congruent. Sometimes I say this looks like an ice cream cone, and it's just the two pieces of the ice cream cone that are always going to be congruent to each other. So what does that actually mean for us? Well, when we go to set up the problem, here it says HK and HG are both tangents. They're drawn from that same point. So if they're equal, then we're going to set up an equation by setting 4 plus 2A equal to 5A minus 32. So literally just set them equal. And then to solve this, easy. Let's move the 2A over to the right side. Oops, that's a minus sign. And then let's add the 32 to the opposite side. So we get 3A. This will give us 4 plus 32, or 36. And then we can divide by 3, and A comes out to be 12. As always, reread the question before you're done. So when it says find HG, we got one last little step. Plug back in to the expression that is HG. So 4 plus 2 times A, and that'll give us our final answer of 28. There was only one more question that I wanted to look at with you that was a little different than all these ones. Otherwise, the rest are practice. So try them out. See how you do. You can check the full answers on the website. But the last one that I did want to look at with you, so it's a good challenge one, flip all the way to the last page. And what we've got here is for number three. Let me slide so you can see it here. Number three says that we have SR and RT, and they're both tangents, so same concept. So that means, right off the bat, they are equal to each other. So we're going to set the tangents equal. So if we set 3x plus 10 here equal to the x squared here, that is the equation we have to solve. And if you can think, if it was x squared just equals a number, we could take the square root. When it's x squared and there's another x in here, we've got to get everything equal to 0 so that we can factor this guy. So I'm going to subtract the 3x over, and at the same time, I'm going to subtract the 10 over. So I get x squared minus 3x minus 10, and then here's an add multiply. So we want to think. What's going to multiply to 10 that adds to 3, or subtracts, I should say, to 3? And that should be 5 and 2. If we go minus 5, positive 2, 
we can split it. Don't forget to flip the sign when you solve. So this comes out to be negative two. This one comes out to be positive five. So it asks you to find the values of X and then find SR and RT. If we plug back in to get SR, if we do three times negative two plus 10, it, you might think that that would come out negative, but it's actually okay, because this is negative six plus 10, so that's four. Mm -hmm. And in that case, RT, you'd plug in negative two and square it. That comes out four, so it actually works out. Over here, if we keep the X equals five, and we plug in, SR would be three times five plus 10, so 15 plus 10, which is 25. And then if we were to calculate RT, that's just five squared. That also works out because it matches and comes out at 25. So that's it, that's your answers there. You actually get two sets of answers, which is why I wanted to look at that one together. All right, try the rest of the questions, see how you're doing. Otherwise, have a great day.